Hello, everyone. Welcome to our video tutorial series on the theories of the term structure. We've got three videos in this series, and this is, in fact, the third and the final video. In the previous two tutorials, we first talked about the expectations hypothesis and the liquidity preference theory. Uh, there are links to these uh, tutorials in the video description if you would like to watch them first. In this uh, final tutorial of the series, we will talk about segmented market hypothesis, or sometimes also called segmented market theory or market segmentation theory. Okay, so let's try to understand what this segmented market theory is all about. Well, it essentially argues that different segments of the bond market operate independently of each other. Okay? And what this means is that each segment has its own supply and demand, demand dynamics. And the bond yields are uh, determined separately by those dynamics. Okay? And you might ask, OK, how does this theory differ from the previous ones we have talked about? Both of the two previous theories relied on essentially a unified bond market, right? not a segmented one. In contrast, as the name implies, segmented market theory says that actually there are market segments in the overall bond market, and this is driven by distinct investor preferences, as we will see in a second, and or institutional constraints leading to isolated market segments. So let me try to explain this to you with a more practical example. So here we have a hump-shaped a yield curve, right? So we have bond yields on the vertical axis, and here's the maturity, so the term of the interest rates on the uh, horizontal axis. So what segmented market theory says is that we can split this yield curve into different segments. So for example, we can have more short-term bonds and long-term on the right hand side and medium term in the middle. So according to this uh, theory, all of these segments are separate from one another and different investors are interested in different segments. Some investors will heavily trade in short term bonds and not so much in other type of bonds. And some investors will per perhaps ex exclusively trade long-term bonds, but they will, they will never or rarely trade in short-term or medium-term bonds. So this is the intuition behind this theory. Now, let's go a bit further. I would like to give you additional details related to that. Now, this idea of segmentation comes from investors' preferred habitats. So what this means is that investors have their preferred maturity ranges. And this is this can be driven by different factors. So for example, it can be primarily driven by simply their investment horizon. So for example, you know, uh, some of you might have be towards the end of their lives, you know, mature people, they might have naturally a more short-term horizon and they, they want to invest in short-term bonds. Whereas uh, younger people might be actually interested in more long-term horizons, and they might prefer, uh, exclusively trade on long-term bonds. But apart from that, this could also be driven by investors varying risk tolerances. So if you perceive long-term bonds as, as more risky, perhaps you shy away from them and uh, concentrate your investments in uh, short-term bonds. Or it can be driven by regulatory requirements as well. So regulators, for example, restrict certain type of uh, institutions uh, from uh, investing in certain type of bonds. And this might cause those institutions to uh, focus on various other segments of the uh, uh, bond market, okay? Or it might be driven by market conventions as well. So each of these factors essentially contribute to market segmentation in the bond market. And it results investors really concentrating uh, their bond holdings within their preferred habitats. In fact, another name for this theory is also uh, the preferred habitat 
theory. Okay. Now, according to this theory, if you really take it to the extreme, this would mean that if I'm a short-term bond investor, I would never ever invest in long-term bonds, however attractive they might be, right? And vice versa as well. So if I'm a long-term bond investor, in the extreme case, this theory would argue that I would never invest in short-term bonds. Of course, this is a bit unrealistic. And more generally, we would expect that it, it, it's not going to be the case that you never invest in a different segment, but that you have a general relaxed reluctance to do so, which can be due to your investment strategies or risk tolerance, as we explained in the previous slide. Just to give you a more practical example, for example, pension funds generally face long-term liabilities because, you know, as people age, they will have to sort of pay them uh, their pensions. So they might have to invest in long-term bonds to match the maturities of those liabilities. Uh, so for them, of course, the key part of the yield curve is the long-term bond segment, right? So they would primarily trade there even if the short-term bonds temporarily offer better yields. So it'd be hard for these guys to, to invest more heavily in short-term bonds. And in fact, there might be regulatory restrictions related to that as well. And all of these things would sort of foster market segmentation in general. And finally, I would also like to talk a bit about the criticisms and limitations of this uh, theory. So the first difficulty is that this theory struggles to explain why bond yields tend to move together. And I'm talking about yields of different maturities, right? So if market segmentation explained the whole story, then different parts of the market would completely move independently of each other. But in reality, that doesn't seem to be the case. So for example, when there are central bank, bank actions that affects the entire yield curve, most often, rather than a particular segment. So those segments do uh, move with one another. Or another example could be international capital flows, which could cause the entire yield curve to shift rather than a particular segment, right? So in that sense, it seems market segment theory may not be telling us the whole story. And the similar criticism comes in terms of this assumption, this rigid assumption of uh, 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 or the assumption of rigid segmentation, right? That an investor would never, a long-term bond investor would never invest in short-term bonds. Again, this seems to be maybe perhaps a bit too extreme, right? Because, you know, if other bonds are, become really attractive, it'd be foolish for most investors not to take advantage of those opportunities, right? Because if, you know, there are arbitrage opportunities created by these interest rate differentials along the yield curve, it is in those in investors' interests to exploit them. And exploiting them requires to trade in different segments of the bond market. Okay, I hope this gives you a, a good understanding of how this theory works. So just to recap, so this was the final video tutorial on our um, series uh, about the theories of the term structure. We began with the expectations hypothesis, then we talked about the liquidity preference theory. Like I said, you can find the links in the video description. And with this video, uh, we have discussed the market segmentation theory. All right, I hope you found this uh, video useful and I will, I'm looking forward to seeing you in other tutorials. Bye for today.